welcome back to my channel. I am Muriel. This is Nurse Muriel. Let me get this seat belt from around my neck to my new subscribers. Hey, how y'all doing? Welcome to the channel. Thank you for hitting that subscribe button. To my oldies but goodies, welcome back. Y'all, excuse the glare from my glasses. I've been trying not to wear my glasses in videos lately because of the glare. And you can able you can see the whole world in my glasses. They're so big. But anyway, excuse the glasses, y'all. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't put my contacts on, but I did. Anywho, welcome to today's video. I know it's been a few days, y'all. I've been working. I'm on today, so in this video, y'all, I'm gonna be all over the place. I already know I'm gonna be all over the place. I'm just letting y'all know ahead of time. First and foremost, I want to say prayers to those in Baltimore. I woke up and I saw on my Facebook feed that a I don't know if it was a ship or what it was. So I'm gonna just say a vessel. Um, collided with the bridge in Baltimore. I have family in Baltimore, and um, I was like, "Oh my goodness!" Um, and my family member, uh, one of them that I'm close to, she normally starts out early in the morning. Like, you know, early in the morning, she drives the city bus. And um, I was like, "Oh, let me check on her." And when I text her, she didn't respond for it. And then I was like, "No, let me call her." <laughs> and so when I called, it was right on time. She had been. Um, she had been at um, an appointment and she couldn't call me right then and she told me when I called she was just getting in her car for an appointment she was going to call me back um, people have a fear of bridges my sister is one like she will get on the floor in the car if we're going over a bridge especially one that's high I have a little bit of apprehension um, when I'm going over a bridge like I got to take a deep breath and like get mentally prepared and this is probably going to this happening probably is going to make it worse for me i remember i turned down i like i didn't turn down but i wouldn't accept a position working an assignment that was paying real good and i was available but i didn't take it because i would have had to go over a bridge to go get to the place and i just was not feeling it that day to even get myself prepared to do that so um yeah prayers to our, our lives were lost i um think I, I heard i was told by my cousin it was like 20 something people as of that time who had lost their lives so prayers to the family members prayers to baltimore um yeah i just ooh, when i saw that i was like oh my goodness some of the things you would think would be un unthinkable because of logistics and people knowing you know heights of bridges versus heights of vessels and what you can and can't make it under you, know, you would think things like this wouldn't happen but i mean obviously it does um so yeah my prayers to all those in baltimore all those who lost the family member um that you know all those dealing with this tragedy so in this video y'all i want to talk a little bit more it's just like i said it's gonna be all over the place and it's gonna be focusing kind of on nurse practitioners even though i'm not a nurse practitioner y'all know i have toyed with the idea of going back to school for my master's degree and i have talked about masters in education becoming a jerry adult um a nurse practitioner becoming a psych mp like i have talked about those three specifically because if i was to go back for my master's it would be in one of those areas but i was watching a youtuber just now harriet i think it's harriet um C &P, and i didn't even know i was subscribed to her y'all but apparently i must have subscribed to her a while ago because her videos popped up in my feed and she talks about being a nurse practitioner she's a adult jerry nurse practitioner and she works in the hospital and i had been told by a nurse practitioner that i work with um in my prn job that they are about to require mps to get their doctorate degrees y'all to become an mp and i'm like they forever moving the goalposts on everything it's like why why now do you have to have your doctorate degree you know it's just i'm like why the goalposts gotta keep moving for you know and they move every goal post except the goal post that i feel like should be moved and that's you should be in practice for a certain amount of time as an rn before you can even go to mp school i feel like a lot of people don't agree with me but i do feel like you should have been a practicing rn for a certain amount of time before you can go for your um before you can even become a nurse practitioner whether it be your master's degree or your doctorate that's how i feel and I have my reasons for feeling it. And one of those reasons I'm going to tell you now. I work currently with a nurse practitioner. She's a new NP. She's, I think she's less than a year. She is 
has the NP over the facility that I work. I'm not going to say if it's my full time. I think I already said what job it was. Anyway, so she's a new NP. She's working with us. She's, you know, I work in long term care. Y'all, when I tell y'all, she almost knows absolutely nothing. Like, I'm not going to say nothing, y'all. I can't compare my experience as a long term, <laughs> some would say long suffering, but I don't look at suffering. Long term, long term care nurse. So, I've learned a lot of things over the years, and I may know a little more than some NPs who are just fresh in the game because I have been in the game as a licensed practical nurse for so long and as a registered nurse for what five years now. But she makes some decisions that I, like I said, I question a lot of things. I was talking to her once and she didn't even know Coreg was a, a medication for basically your heart, blood pressure, you know, she didn't even know that and she and we were going back and forth and we were not in sync with what we were saying is and it's because she didn't know that Coreg was, you know, the medication for what it's for. Um she didn't know that, you know, what I've been taught and I'm sure it's some a science behind it and I can understand it being the science behind it that before you administer dilate and then the patient who's on tube feeding her tube should be turned off an hour before an hour after administering dilate that's old school nursing that I was taught she didn't know that and there was a patient who levels was off and I was telling her well it's probably because you know no one has been turning their tube on and off before administering dilate because I don't even say see an order doing to do so and I was doing it because I have always been taught to do it but I don't think the other nurses have been doing it because they may not know and so she didn't know that herself so when she you know changed the medication order she also added in that caveat that the tube be turned off an hour before an hour after um metadrine she was assuming it was for hypertension you know just things like that that could really you know cause harm you know to the patient if she's not doing these things correctly and i'm not there that often so just imagine the you know i'm not only want to say mistakes she's making but just imagine some of the things that may be going on when she's working with a nurse who may not question her on certain things. And I was told that this practitioner plans to open up her own like practice. We have to work with a collaborating doctor, yes we do. But this practitioner plans to open up their own office once they get their year in. And I'm looking like, honey, that ain't what you wanna do, <laughs> you know? Um, but it's, I feel bad for the patients because they're not going to know any better. They're going to go off what this practitioner tells them. Um, and it's almost like they're, this practitioner is using these long-term care patients as her guinea pig. But she don't know um, quite a few things. It, it's apparent. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I say yeah, I feel like you should be a practicing RN for a couple years before you go into MP school. And um, this, she was a practicing RN. But she wasn't practicing in the field that she's working in now. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and then, you know, when I had a talk, I'm not even going to say where she worked before. I don't want y'all to, you know, if y'all, if y'all work with me and y'all watch this video, which I'm hoping no one works with me, watch this video. Y'all don't know who I'm talking about, <laughs> but hopefully nobody that works with me watches my videos because child, some of y'all, I, I be dragging some of y'all in my videos. But anyway. And I only drag those who have been nurses like five to ten years. And I'm not dragging any new nurses. Because it's all a learning experience, y'all. See, I get on here and say about the med errors I made. But I, the, ones In two I be miles, dragging, you the ones I be dragging, they've been nurses five years or better now. So some things I feel like they should know. Um, so, yeah, that's one of the reasons. That's really the main reason why I feel like you should be in practice for a little while. But, y'all, why they moving the goalposts now that you got to have your doctorate? Like, what? Well, come on now. It's already two years post your BSN that you will possibly graduate with your FNP. I'm not talking nurse practitioner now. My MSN in education that I plan, that I was planning, you know, that was my first thought of getting, that it wouldn't, it wouldn't pertain to that for me to get my doctorate. My, my MSN in education would be suffice and i'm gonna tell y'all honestly y'all i think that's what i'm gonna go for i'm gonna be honest with y'all because i do not like school and now y'all are taking it from a two-year msn program to a three-year doctorate program it's nay i say <laughs> like nay I, I i i can't see me doing it and when it boils down to it y'all i really just wanted to be able to work from home 
know, I was thinking of, okay, come, become an adult Jerry in P because I just love geriatrics. But in all honesty, y'all, I actually want to work less. <laughs> that is the goal for me, to work less. And I feel like I can be an educator. I feel like I educate people all the time one one thing or the other and in a so, quarter mile and so msn and education may be where i end up and thankfully i don't have to get a doctorate to do that they will not make me go to school for three years for that three additional years for that i can actually probably get an msn in education from one of these off brand i call them off brand colleges y'all excuse me if y'all go to one of them but because i may end up going to one of them myself but i call them off brand colleges i could get an msn in education one of these off brand colleges and your universities in like six months to nine months to a year so um that will probably be where i end up to be honest um and then i could still work prn at my state job i could drop the part-time and still do that and still you know just have those two streams of income coming up and only showing up to work two days a week however why are they moving the goalposts y'all tell me why y'all think they're doing it i have my i have my ideas but y'all tell me because all before MSN was suffice but now we got to have a doctorate degree y'all I'm bringing my son to the dentist it's not on the most desirable part of town and if you live on this side of town if you recognize the surroundings I apologize I used to live on this side of town I had no issues when I live here but as far as crime stats it's not the most desirable side of town but I love this dentist office I love the way your they, destination is I love the way they are with um you know the care and the communication and how it's set up and so i never switched my kids over to we have gone to other dentists before but i i just like this one and so i'm gonna stick with it and my kids liked it too the other dentist i tried once before my daughter said it was so rough with her um and it was in a you know it was in a, a different type of neighborhood or whatever but she said they were so rough and you know stuff like that and so i just stick with this one this is where they've been coming they about to age out because they they wouldn't see my son because he's they only see kids now and y'all know my youngest is 19 so yeah but anyway i just wanted to come at y'all with this video y'all tell me what's going on with this making mps get their doctorate degree if you agree with it and if you agree with it you tell me why because really that other that extra year is just research and i can research while i'm on the job <laughs> Y'all, I had to come back. Let me tell y'all. So I'll tell y'all about this old good insurance we got. Like, the insurance so good, y'all. I'm, I'm upset. So I tell y'all all about this old good insurance we got at the, you know, state and, you know, the balances and the premiums and stuff. And I chose a lot of my plans. I chose the plans with the higher premium. But for dental, I didn't because, you know, my kids have gotten some of the dental work, you know, that need to be done. Not to say more will need to be done, but they've done the braces. We paid out of pocket for the, uh, we paid out of pocket for a crown. My daughter wanted the porcelain. She didn't want the silver cap or whatever. So we paid the $800 for that, you know. But when it comes to a cleaning, y'all, the most basic dental thing you can do, the x-ray in the cleaning, y'all, that's mainly what my kids get done. Um, anything extra out of that, I pay out of pocket because I know certain things cost more, but a cleaning, y'all. So I got the basic dental with my job because it said it pays 100% of the lower amount, um, blah, blah, blah. And I was just looking at cleaning. I wasn't looking at every all other things because if there's some surgery that needs to be done if they go to a hospital for the surgery, um, I'm thinking like my son had an extraction done at the hospital and because of him being I don't like to say it he's sitting here um, you know we had to go to the hospital and so I'm thinking a hospitalization like that like paying for the anesthesia stuff like that my insurance would cover a lot of that because that was actually a surgery so my insurance which I told y'all I picked a higher premium I pay a lot out and I pay a good bit not a lot but I pay a, lot, a good bit for insurance but y'all, why I come to get his teeth clean just now? We going. <laughs> and these people, girl, I think I be wanting to eat y'all now. And I had a tuna sandwich before I left. Why these people ask me? Why don't people ask me for two hundred and six dollars? I said two hundred and six dollars. I have insurance. I was like, I got insurance, and they was like, Yeah, with your insurance, it's two hundred and six dollars. And 
I said, well, what did my insurance cover? Because I, cleanings be like $40 and $50, I thought. She was like, for the x-ray and this and this and this and that, after it paid, your insurance pays this portion, it's $206. She was like, yeah, with the dental plus, it would have been much less out of pocket, um, but a higher premium. And uh, I was like, well, he just want a cleaning. I was like, y'all, my son, kids used to be on like medic. They've been on Medicare stuff. They've been on hospital insurance and stuff like that. But I always choose. I always used to choose like the basic dental because they had Medicaid, Medicare, whatever, whatever it is, Medicare, Medicaid, Medicaid. And Medicaid used to cover. And at one point I was paying like a $25 deductible. Y'all, then I asked her, I said, well, what's the price without insurance? Because I'm like, okay, well, I might just pay out of pocket without my insurance. Because y'all know if y'all didn't know out of pocket without insurance is always cheaper than with insurance and <laughs> that's the scam okay and yeah we got to ride in the sauna because now they got me upset i want some ice cream but um y'all out of pocket without insurance is 186 dollars so still a lot cheaper because y'all were going to charge me 206 plus y'all were going to build my insurance for their portion that they were paying which in no total they were only paying like 80 dollars but y'all still was go, you know, child. We ain't gonna talk about that. So y'all, I'm like, I ain't come prepared to pay that. Y'all know I just paid that car off. We only get paid twice a month at my job, you know. And I done paid all my bills. Payday will be soon. Not saying my son's cleaning is not worth two hundred six dollars, because it is. But y'all, my goodness. I'm glad my other kid's working. I might have to reschedule. I mean, I don't know, y'all. I just. Oh God, two hundred and six dollars. I know I could find it cheaper somewhere else. I was just talking about how he they like this place, but y'all, and best believe when over in Roman roll around November, I'm going for the dental plus. Cause why? And I didn't even. And I said I had chose everything with almost a higher premium, but I the only, and I think I only didn't charge Vision with the higher premium because I don't mind paying out of pocket. Out of pocket. No, because I think my vision covered um, a certain amount, like $100 or something for the eyes. I can't remember, child. I got to look at this insurance. But this done made me mad now. $206? When I asked her how much is it without insurance because it's always cheaper, she was like, not really. And then she was like, well. And she looked it up and she was like, it'd be one, I think said $186 or $184. Yeah, cheaper without insurance. Thank you. Man, I'm, I'm just, I'm just out. <laughs> I don't even know what to say, y'all. I'm upset. I want him to get a tea queen down. Mm -hmm. And yes, nurses make money. And yes, I could afford to pay $200 to get his tea clean. And I think it was the shock of it. If I came here today prepared to spend $206, then you know that'd be one thing, but I came here prepared to pay like fifty dollars. Well, she hit me with the two hundred six. I couldn't even gather my thoughts. <laughs> I know the people in there was probably thinking too, like my goodness, two hundred six, and she got a shirt. <laughs> Child, I'm gonna tell y'all, and y'all gonna take it how y'all want them. It's almost best to be on government benefits. Okay, y'all. I rescheduled, child. I might as well. I'm just going to have to pay the $206, y'all. I'm just upset. I'm, I'm just. I wasn't prepared, y'all, to pay that today. I mean, I got people coming to pressure wash my house today. Well, $275. So. I rescheduled for next week. Pay. I just gotta pay. I'm upset. This is only gonna happen one year because I'm open enrollment. We get the higher done plan, but I rescheduled, so we'll come back next week. It'll be the clean after payday. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.